Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and thank you very much for joining me on this lovely day. It's not one of my normal live streaming days. It is uh, here at the moment. It is a Tuesday, still morning, but not for much longer. Um, I was away for the weekend, so I didn't get to stream during the weekend. Um, and I just sort of felt like I wanted to get out here and do a little bit of tinkering. So I thought, great opportunity to stream. Um, I, uh, probably some of my viewers are still watching Steve. We had a slight scheduling snafu before. Um, and so, uh, Steve, who is pre premiering a video at the moment, which I believe will be finished in about five minutes. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, we, there's a little bit of overlap there, but not too much. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, but that's just what happens. So, uh, we'll just do our... Normal quick little hellos to people. I will say hello to Jay from the House of Moth, who has probably done his normal thing where he jumps in and says hello at the very, very beginning and then he pisses off again. So we, we may come back. Uh, hello to Nate. Hello, how are you? Chris Wilkinson, hello. Uh, Jack68k, hello to you. Um, Starbuck Tech. Shady Robot. <laughs> Steve is here. Hello, Steve. Um, so he, he, are you juggling them both at the same time, are you, Steve? So uh, uh, just don't, we won't tell anyone I've started. So uh, hello to Lucas Elliott, um, which is cold down here. I just saw steam coming from my, my breath. It's about 12 degrees Celsius outside. Don't ask me what that is in Fahrenheit because I does not know. But it's a little bit chilly, but still, it's, uh, it's nicer than where I was on the weekend. On the weekend, I went somewhere which is really cold, which is nice to visit from time to time, but you don't want to live there. Um, sorry about the sun pouring in uh, the window here. There's not really much I can do about that. It's, uh, it's the whole winter thing. Um, that's where the sun is, and it's low in the sky in winter. So, uh, Jay is here. Hello. Benjamin Dressler. Hello. Joe Williams. Hello. Um, so, anyhow, as the thumbnail and video description uh, will uh, say, or does say, uh, I will be looking at a Macintosh 2SI today. And I'm going to just tidy a little bit of room because I'm going to need some space on this desk and I've been doing stuff. And when I do stuff, I make a mess. So, um, I, uh, uh, now, I hate to tell you this, folks. I feel bad about it, sort of. Not really, but sort of. But I did kind of do a little bit of what do you call that um um where you where you do a thumbnail that's kind of not entirely accurate um click baiting that sort of thing uh i kind of did a bit of a clickbait, and you know why i did a bit of a clickbait? bait well what the clickbait is the board in the thumbnail is not the board we're going to be working on today <laughs> So anyone who's thinking, how's he ever going to get that one working? He's not. That one is going to become a spare parts board. It is a board that was given to me at the same time as this. Um, but I took one look at it and went, no, that's a spare parts board. So, um, yeah. Um, Showtime787, hello there. So, anyhow, um, this is the... This is the uh, this is the thing. We're going to be working on a 2SI that doesn't work, does need to be fixed, does need to be repaired, but it is not the 2SI in the thumbnail picture. So I apologise to everyone for that, for clickbaiting you so terribly. But it still is work that needs to be done. Uh, I can show you the board from the thumbnail. It's in an absolutely horrendous state. And some parts are going to be taken off that and they're going to go in an airplane and fly all the way over to Jay from the House of Moth um, because he's going to be using some of those to fix... Um, uh, what's his name? Justin's computer. So there you go. Um, yes, the rust is impressive. So anyhow, this one here is pretty much complete. It's got a bit of a rattle, so we'll have to see what that is, what, what that's all about. Um, we'll open him up and have a little look-see. So uh, I just want to do a quick little shout out to anyone who might be a new subscriber. I've had quite a few new subscribers come on board over the last sort of 24, 48 hours, so I wanted to say a big shout out to you guys, and if you are watching one of my streams for the first time, uh, this is one of the things that I do. Um, I do some pre-recorded videos as well, where I go in and work on certain things, and they're all edited, and they're all cut together nicely, and neat and tidy, and all that sort of stuff, with me talking to the camera. Uh, and then I do ones like this, which is a live stream of me, basically just going through the repairs that I have here. Um, 
I, uh, I repair and restore vintage Macintosh computers and people send them to me and then I fix them up. Now this was actually one that was sent to me as a gift. It's sort of a trade, if you will. He sent me a whole bunch of recapping to do. And he said, I've got a bunch of not working computers as well. Would you like them? And I said, yeah, look, I would love them. Thank you. Um, and he said, well, you know, we can work out something on the final bill of the recapping cost. So it works out really well for me. I like to do that. Um, so far, he, there were four computers in that. So far, I've repaired two of them. And this is hopefully will be the third one repaired as well. So, um, all right, I am going to just change over here to the top view for a second because it's a more appropriate view for what I'm doing here. Let's move me out of the way. Hey, why is there only one image of me here? What's all that about? Meant to be, meant to be a microscope pick here as well, but for some reason I have no microscope coming out at the moment. So let's just see if we can sort that out because I am going to need the microscope at some stage. This little microscope camera is just really flaky at times. It's just how it is. Um, so I'm just setting up the white balance. And there it is. There we go. It's nice when they just work like that. Okay. I predict the rattle is the battery. Okay. We have any other predictions here of what the rattle might be? I'm open to, uh, to anyone who might have some theories. Uh, just moving my, there we go. Okay, so uh, so anyhow, this is the case here. Now the 2SI predates the really brittle plastic. Could well be mouse poop. I'm going to be honest with you there. There's a very good chance there's mouse poop in here. Um, this is this is a model that predates the uh, the really brittle plastic. So I generally can just play with these little clips here with impunity. I don't really need to worry too much about them snapping when I go to remove it. Uh, but you still do need to exercise some caution. The 2SI uh, came out, was it sort of soon after the LC, I think, something like that. I don't remember the exact timeline. But of course, it's one of these ones that had this curve at the front. And of course, you could buy monitors as well that were designed to have exactly the same curvature at the front. So when you put the monitor on top, they had this really nice look about them. They look very sort of purposeful. So yeah, it was very nice. It's it nice. I like it, yes. Uh, has everyone smashed the like button? I'm just wondering, has everyone smashed the like button? If not, can you please smash that like button? Or feather it gently, you don't actually need to smash it. Um, so, uh, let's go. Oh, Thomas Armstrong, hello, thank you for joining. Uh, God, it's cold here. Um, right, all right. Okay, I'm back. What did I miss? I hope your uh, premiere went really well there, Steve. I do uh, apologise for the scheduling snafu um, with, uh, with that. But uh, uh, yes, I mean, I realise that I don't normally stream on uh, this time or day, so I know it's a little bit weird. So anyhow, uh, we've changed view here. And that was because I smashed the like button thingy. That always goes back to the front view. All right, so let's take the lid off and see what we have inside. I think we found out uh, what was rattling. It was part of a network card. So I actually already had one of these network cards, which is kind of cool. It's nice to have another one. What's really good about these is, is the 2SI did not come with a floating point unit or a math coprocessor. There's the 68882 math coprocessor. If you buy a network card like this, or if you have a network card like this, the main part of the card has a socket to put a floating point unit in there. So that was a really handy thing. So this is network card will work with a 2SI and an SE30. The SE30 has the same processor direct slot as the 2SI. Uh, but of course, with the SE30 already has a floating point unit, so you wouldn't need to stick one in there. But for, with the 2SI, I can plonk one in there and that gives me my, uh, my math coprocessor for the 2SI. So there we go. So that's a really nice thing to have, a nice little network card. As I say, I've got one of these. I know they work well, so that's great. No, you can't have it retro techie, but you can ask as many times as you like. Um, now this one clearly has some stuff missing here. I'm not overly concerned about that. I mean, I probably can find a floppy drive floating around somewhere to put in here from something else. But truth be told, I don't use the floppy drives. So if this is something that's going to remain in my collection, I don't really care. Uh, the fan has been taken out, but I think I did that. Because I'm pretty sure the fan's still around. So I don't know where that is. But anyhow, the fan would normally sit here. 
Uh, I have a spare one of those. In actual fact, I have so many spare pieces of 2SI, it's not funny. I have two complete cases of a 2SI. Um, the boards inside them are dead, but I have two complete case cases, and I think I might have one spare power supply. Got a nice little Seagate hard drive in here. I don't know if this is original. This looks a little bit new uh, for for me, uh, to, for this, so I would think that's probably been added later on. So typically, um, you, these are a little bit fiddly to get out when the fan is in there and the power supply is in there as well. It's really hard to work out which one's supposed to come out first. It's really hard to move the fan without the power supply, with, that, with the power supply there, and it's really hard to move the power supply with the fan there. So you, you kind of can't win. But once the fan is out, it's actually really easy. Just There's two little metal pieces here, which you can't see. There we go. Two little metal pieces here. You push in, and then there's a little plastic clip here, which is clipped on there, and then that just comes straight out. Uh, interesting, exactly the same pinout as the 2CI and a few other computers as well, I think. Um, but uh, obviously a very different shaped power supply. These power supplies have problems. They really do have problems. We'll open this up in a little while and we'll see. Uh, then this is a logic board, no battery in here, which is fantastic because it has been removed. Uh, but of course I can see a huge amount of capacitor gunge here. So I'm just gonna remove that. I can actually see it, the, the angle that I am, the light is shining on it, you can see it there. If you can see how it's shiny here, all that board is shiny. And then all around here is this great big cloud of gunk here. And that's just the leaky caps. So we've got two here, three here, another one there. Got a couple down here, one there, one there. So we're definitely looking at some serious capacitor leakage here. So that's going to need to be sorted. Um, and um, yeah, so that's just going to be part of it. I... I have a couple of these Seagate drives and they still work, so I'm hopeful that this one might, might still work as well. And we'll see what little uh, secrets it might hold. Uh, whee. Maybe I use this floppy drive for something else. I don't know. Maybe I opened it out and raided it already and I just don't remember doing it. Um, one thing that I have done with my own 2SI, because one of the things you can do with the 2SI is you can overclock them, is by replacing... Which one is it? One of these, that one, that little um, uh, crystal oscillator, you can replace that with a faster one and that will overclock the CPU. Um, I have done that to my other one. I'm not sure I'll do it to this one. Uh, doesn't make that much of a difference uh, to be harnessed. Um, the question for 42 is on the door. Yes, it could be, it could well be. We could have the question to life universe and everything there. Um, so, um, it's got some RAM in it, which is nice. I think these are just ones. So, I mean, we'll see. Super PC. I can't read that to save my life because I'm old. Memory, Super PC memory. Memory solutions, warranty void if removed. Why on earth would you void a warranty for removing that? Come on. That's just stupid. Okay, so these are probably ones. It'll be great if they're more, but we'll find that out. I mean, I could work it out by doing... Well, they're 60 nanoseconds, so maybe they're bigger. That'd be awesome if they were like fours or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could look up the chips, but I'm not sure I can be bothered. Okay. Let's, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chips. And then an empty spot here for where a parity chip would be if it was a parity set. Okay, there's our little Ramses, Ramsteins. Uh, now, almost always, and I know in this instance this doesn't work, because I wouldn't have this here. It wouldn't have been given to me if it did work. Um, so these have RAM on board. You can actually see here there's some RAM here. One, two, three, four, eight. Eight little chips here, which is, I don't know, four megabytes on board. I can look it up, but I, I, haven't, I haven't looked it up. And then I think you've got some VRAM here. So that's some VRAM there. And I think that's a slot for, is that a slot? So what's that slot for? ROM SIM, there you go. So there are two different versions of this board out there. There are ones where there's ROM on board. There, there, ROM, ROM. And then there's ones where there's a ROM SIM there. And you can actually change whether it's using the SIM. This little jumper here, it's W1 or something. If you put a jumper on that, it'll access the ROM from there. If you don't put a jumper on, it'll access the RAM from the board. And of course, um, 
you could stick a Rominator in these if you want to. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, anyhow, let's continue. Let us continue. Um, I am going to... I'm not sure which one to look at first. Should I look at the power supply? Or should I look at the logic board? Probably, probably the logic board, because then we can just get it working quicker. Because I can power it up with a different power supply. So, we're going to put that over there in the special storage spot. I think I'm actually running out of Q-tips, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do today, but never mind. Um... I have to use old ones. Won't that be awful? So this one is held in with these little plastic tabs, the same as like the LCs are. You've got to pull these tabs out and then you can slide the board backwards. Uh, again, these ones aren't super brittle, so you generally don't need to worry too much about breakages, but uh, you still want to be careful. Is there a screw holding this in? Anyone? 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 I feel like it's, it's, it's harder than it should be. Why? Searching for a screw. Don't take that out of context. Assembled in Ireland. <laughs> Do not vex me. Uh. I see no reason why this shouldn't come out. There's nothing holding it in. So. Mm. She's gone. She's starting to go. There we go. Just needed a little bit of brute force. That's what we like with old brittle computers. Because this is mine, I don't need to be as careful as if it was working on someone else's. And that's not to say I'm not going to provide a certain level of care here. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to deliberately try and destroy the thing. Hello, GT. Um, the speaker, it was already out. Uh, yes, the speaker was never in there. So, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, the speaker is um, is underneath. I'll show you. It's uh, it's there. So uh, it's it, it doesn't actually come in contact, um, you know, with that board sliding out. The way it works with this connecting. So I've, I said speaker before, but I meant fan. So anyhow, yeah, the fan has been taken out. The speaker is in the bottom of the case, and it makes contact via these little guys here. So there are little metal things, little prongs that sit up in the board. And then when you uh, in the, the case, and then when you slide the board in, they touch these metal things there, and that's for the uh, speaker and something else. Oh, and we've got a little power button there, which is just falling off, but that's okay. It's all right. That's guaranteed. Okay, Bruce Force. <laughs> hey. Okay, so this one here is actually in pretty good condition, as I mentioned before. You can clearly see when I get the reflection on there. We've got a massive amount of gunge here from that's leaked out from these capacitors. So it definitely needs recapping. I don't expect that this would work the way it is. There's a very good chance it'll need a little bit of cleaning around here as well because electrolyte is conductive. And so you can end up creating all sorts of accidental shorts here. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, greetings from Northern New Jersey. Hello there, Chris. Uh, had to wait to post. <laughs> Didn't we? Okay, so well, thank you very much for subscribing. I do appreciate that. I will try not to make you regret it. I will try not to make this an unbelievably boring and awful stream where you think to yourself, why did I subscribe to that? I'm, I hope, I hope that I'm going to do that. But anyhow, greetings to you. Um, you know, to LED to one of those pads and get an HDD activity light. But that's really, really cool. So what I have actually done with mine um, is I have... Uh, got a uh, an, another LED, and I glued it here, um, sort of just using a little bit of hot glue, hot glue gun, and just glued it here, pointing down into this LED. So this one's, I think, a green LED. I got a red one, and I hot glued it down into there, then connected it up to Blue SCSI, um, uh, or SCSI to SD, I can't remember which one, one of them that has a drive activity light, 
and then uh, and then when you put the case on, you've got just essentially got the one light in the front of the case. But what happens is it's green for being on, but when there's drive activity, it flickers red. So um, I and I love that. I really love that. Uh, really important thing to keep in mind with the 2SI. Don't ask me why, but the 2SI doesn't have termination power. So if you are going to connect a SCSI 2SD or a blue SCSI into one of these, you will need to wire it up to the power because there's no termination power in the SCSI bus. How stupid is that? Big Bad's here, hello there. If Bruce doesn't share what kind of multimeter he uses, soon I might cry. Well, it's your lucky day then, Jay, because the sort of multimeter that I use is this guy here. This is a Kaiweetz KM601 smart multimeter. Look at that beautiful big color screen, full of features, incredibly budget price. Um, and you will find a link in the description if you want one. Now yours wouldn't necessarily come with this pretty awesome 3D printed case that I have here, uh, but I will very soon be sharing the STL files so that you can print your own case like this. Uh, and you can have this standing up like this um, and uh, use it like some other uh, multimeters out there. So anyhow, that's uh, just letting you know. Um, that's a really, really good multimeter. If you do want to buy one of these, there are links in the description. So, glad we got that sorted. Time to jump over to the microscope. We're going to whip some of these caps off. We'll try and get this done as quick as possible because I do have rather a lot of things I need to do today. Uh, so, jump across to the scope view. Uh, have you made the infomercial for it yet? No, but I have made a review for it. So if you want to, uh, if you want to, God, I can already smell the cap juice. Um, if you want to uh, find out about it and find out just how good it is, or bad for that matter, to review, let's face it, um, go and check it out. All right, so time to knock off some of these caps. Just gonna whip them off. Stinks. Oh man, that stinks. It's been a while since I've had a really stinky one like this. Been missing out. Where she blows, there the bay. Off, 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 off. There she goes. Okay, using a hot air station to get these capacitors off. I know there are a lot of people out there that say just do the uh, push and turn type thing, just tearing them off the board. I don't do that. Um, if you want to do it, that's fine, but I won't. Um, I have had to repair way too many, way too many boards where people were using the push and turn method, so I don't use it. Can I get this off without melting this connector? I'm certainly melting this little guy. Melty, melty, melty. You can't see it. You can't see that. It's not in view. Sorry. Realistically, a smart person, if there was one here, would probably wrap some of this plastic in a bit of captain tape before they started doing this. Um, that's what a smart person would do. Now, this little cap here often causes a fair bit of carnage because of the, uh, the proximity to the central processing unit. The 2SI is another one of these uh, computers, like the other Mac 2 series, the uh, Mac 2, 2X, 2CX, 2CI, 2FX, all of those, that has a um, soft power, soft power on, so you can actually switch it on with the keyboard. Now, there's almost, all, not almost always, there has often been, when I work on these, a bit of nastiness around this region here. Um, that I think just gets caused by this cap going bad. And it's not uncommon to have to replace this little C37 as well. It gets burned out. But this one actually looks really good. A fair bit of dust in there. Captain and Tennille tape. <laughs> so I'm going to just get some of my aluminum tape here. And just make a little bit of a shape around here. Because I'm right in the midst of 
plastic city here. We've got our RAM slots, ROM slot, SCSI connector. Feels weird doing a live stream on a Tuesday. It's just not a normal day for me to do one on. Just not normal. Uh, is that all the caps off? No, there's a whole stack over here. I think they're all, all of them I think are 47 microfarad 16, but I'll find that out soon when I look at the recapping guide on recappermac.com.au, which for anyone who is, uh, who might have noticed, went down for a bit. Went down for a little bit. The website, in actual fact, was fine, but the DNS went down, so... Yeah. Okay, one more cap to go. One more. Let's move this thing. I've had this thing in here for out ages, and it keeps it's getting been getting melted. Wow. I don't know what shape it used to be, but it's a different shape now. Out. What is that? That looks like a color classic ROM chip. Okay, there we go. Ah, uh, 1147 and two Axial 220. Excellent, thank you. Save me from looking. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, Jay, you, uh, you have a uh, Kai Wheats KM601, do you not? You're part of the cool Kai Wheats crowd. Hopefully we've got enough around here. The uh, danger is that I melt one of these headphone connectors or something, which I'd rather not do. <clears throat> and of course, as soon as we get all these caps off, the next thing is we need to clean them. Got to get those pads all looking nice and shiny, ready to take on some new capacitors. I think I might have promised this 2SI to someone. Not sure. Possible. Uh, in the middle of recapping a Macintosh TV. I'm glad it's back. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that Macintosh TV, easy logic board to recap, but that uh, little TV tuner thing's a pain in the backside. A pain in the backside. Going to use some flux for cleaning up here. So I basically just add some fresh flux to these old pads and I will get some heat from my iron I'll get some solder or solder and I will just get them all looking nice and shiny just a little bit of scrapey scrapey a little bit of heat a bit of solder a bit of flux we work some magic a little bit of fumes in my face a little bit of fume extractor switched on What flux is Bruce using? <laughs> you have to try and guess what flux I'm using. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'll put it there. So which flux am I using today? See if you can guess. Enzo is here, hello there. And hello to Will Jacobs. And if anyone else has joined in and haven't said hello, I do apologize. Hello. Um, doo -doo -doo. Nice video tonight, Mac 84. Yes, it was. I watched almost all of it. I had to just duck off at the end to come and get myself set up down here. Um, I love the uh, 
it, it was really funny because I started doubting myself. I started doubting myself. I was watching the video, and Steve said, uh, he said, I've got this 630. He pulled out the board. I looked at the board. I went, that's not, a, that's not an 040 chip. That's a PowerPC chip. And then I started doubting myself. Oh, he obviously didn't say a 630. It's obviously something else, not a 630. I miss. I must have misheard that because he was looking at it and he wasn't reacting to it at all. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, I've stuffed up. It's not a 630. But sure enough, it was a 630 with a PowerPC board in it. And that is a nice little surprise, nice little treat to have. Um, yeah. I like the, uh, I very much like the beige G3s. I have one of each. I have one of the desktop and one of the tower. The tower, I think I probably like more, mainly because it's just such a wonderfully imposing looking computer. Um, but uh, I really do like them. Um, I didn't used to, but I am so glad I have them in the collection. I got the, I got the desktop one. Oh, geez, how did I get the desktop one? I think I might have ended up getting both of them in the same um, lot, but, um, and I was just sort of like, uh, nah, zero interest, I have no interest in that, it's too new for me, don't like it, nah, 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 nah. Um, and then I just started using it, I'm like, man, these are cool, I need to get myself some, uh, whoops, some Q-tips, some cotton buds as we call them here, back in a second, I have some here, they're awful, but I have some. These are the reject ones, the ones I don't like. I shall buy some more today. But in the meantime, these are good spares. Oh. We almost have a functional bathroom now. For anyone who's been watching my live streams and hearing me talk about the fact that we are going through a bathroom innovation at the moment. Uh, we, uh, we have about a 65% functional bathroom now. The toilet works, the bath works, the vanity works. We don't have any electricity in there yet. So we're having to use a sort of funny light setup at the moment. And although the shower is all plumbed up, we don't have any shower, uh, shower glass, you know, sort of, uh, uh, what do you call that? You know, the part that stops, the, that keeps the water in, stops it from going all over the room, whatever you call those things. It's not shower curtain, but it's, you know, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, we haven't got that yet. It's been measured up. The glass is being made. It's all custom, so we have to wait for it all to get made and then toughened and stuff. Because glass has to be toughened in bathrooms for obvious reasons. I'm just turning on the heater because I'm cold. Now, this is the heater that does occasionally from time to time just flare up into a supernova. So just, just going to be very careful as I put this down. There we go. Put that there. No supernova today. So we'll consider that a lucky day. I might buy a lottery ticket. Uh, okay, let's continue cleaning. It's not, this, it's, not, it's, it's not actually the shower door. It's the whole enclosure. So it's the whole showering. So the way it's set up is... Two of the two of the it's, there's walls, and then the, the glass enclosure around the outside. I have got a whole stack of boards all packed up that I am posting out today, after just taking forever to get things, you know, bundled up. It's one of the things that I'm really bad at. You know, I get these things recapped and then I put them in a pile and then it's like, you got to get them back to their owners. So I've got, a, I've got three packages going out today with about, oh, there's probably a dozen boards or so, something like that. Um, I've... I have been getting some of the real troublesome boards sorted out, which is great. I still have to do more. Um, when I see like this last weekend, I went away. And so that just means that I didn't get any time to work on the computers. Um, and I can't just keep live streaming, you know, 
the same thing over and over again. So I'm having to do things like this today where I'm working on a 2SI that doesn't really, there's no time pressure on this at all. But I have to do it because I can't just keep live streaming the same thing over and over again, which is like Mac Classics and Color Classics. That's all people send me. But anyhow, I no complain. I love System 6. Just just going out and saying it, I love System 6. It's the first sort of uh, uh, operating system I was using when I was started working with Macs professionally. Um, I remember when 7 came in. Uh, but I remember all the old font DA mover stuff with System 6. And of course, we used um, suitcase for font management back then. And a little bit of Adobe Type Manager to get the smooth fonts. I have another 2SI here at the moment. It belongs to a customer, Max, who's probably not watching now, but if he is watching, hello, Max. Um, it's been giving me an awful lot of grief. I can't get it to work, and I'm almost certain I know what the problem is, but I'm just not sure. Uh, I've, I've, I've just got to keep hunting for busted traces. And I think it's related to the ROM. And one on my way to me will be my first. Also have a Cetra 610. Yeah, the, uh, the, the funny thing about the 2SI is that it had the potential to kind of be Apple's next big thing. But, uh, at the time, um, but they deliberately crippled it. So they deliberately put a slower CPU in it than they had originally planned. And the reason why they did that was because the 2CI was still selling really well. And you sort of might think, well, why, why, why? Well, the 2CI had three new bus expansion slots and it had a PDS slot. This one here only has one PDS slot, no new bus slots. But you could get a PDS to new bus adapter and then run a new bus in it horizontally. Um, but clearly not as good. Um, this one has, I think the CI has four RAM slots as well. I think they have the same RAM capacity. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't know if this one was deliberately crippled to not uh, have as much RAM in it as the 2CI. But yes, this was deliberately made slower. So if we have a look at the CPU, You'll see it is a 20 megahertz there. That's what the 20 on the end of that is, that 68030FE20B. And it was originally meant to have a 25 megahertz in here, but they deliberately crippled it. Um, so that they could keep selling their two CIs, which were a very, very successful computer for Apple. They kept them going for ages. This is the one where I like to try and be as careful as possible so that I don't melt this plastic connector because we don't like melting connectors, no. <sighs> Ends up being the ADB filter. Uh, I had that issue at exactly the same time as Joe. It was funny because I was working on an SE, it's an SE, SE? It was an SE. I think it was an SE. Or was it an SE30? Anyhow, whichever one it was. I was having a very similar problem to Joe. And uh, I made some suggestions for him and everything. And then I was working on mine and he was working on his in a live stream. But I wasn't watching the live stream because I was doing my own thing. Um, and then I ended up sorting it out. I said, Joe, I found it. It's the filter. It's the ADB filter. Uh, replace it and away you go. And I gave him the steps of how you could test it. And he said... That's exactly the same as what happened to me. And, and at that point, I made it very, very clear that I absolutely had not watched his live stream. So it was just a little bit embarrassing for me. But, um, but anyhow, we did figure it out. Uh, we figured it out independently. I'm just going to snip some of this blobby plastic off. This is what I do when I do melt something so that I can hide the fact that I've melted it. I just chopped the blobby bits off. And you'd never know. You'd never know. Uh, 
Here we go. Uh, why not swap a newer, faster CPU on it? You can. Um, so there's a limit to how fast you can take these. Um, they, apparently they start to have problems if you go too fast. But I've got a, a, a few different... Um, Got a few different of these, so that's 40. So whatever that whatever that is, you halve it, and that's the speed the CPU will run at. So that's 40. Was it kilohertz, megahertz, 40 megahertz? Um, and the CPU is 20. So if I put in a 50, it'll run at 25 megahertz. Now you can just keep the same CPU in there, or you can put a faster one in. And I think I do have some faster ones here. Let's just have a look at my little. CPU pile because we can always get you know get tricky. That's my CPU pile here. Some of these are wrecked. There's no way I'd be able to put them in again. So look at that. I've actually got a 25 here. So if I put a 50 in and I swap that, I could actually run this 25 megahertz with an actual 25 megahertz CPU. We've got a 33 here. Have a go at it. It's a bit mangled, but it's a 33. Uh, there's another 33. I don't know if it's genuine or not. This one's pretty mangled. That one's got no writing on it. So I've got a few 33s. Look at, look at how mangled those legs are. I would hate to have to solder that on. That would be a nightmare. Nightmare. But uh, yeah, I could stick a 25 on there, I suppose. If we were feeling adventurous. Hmm. Fun. And M2. <laughs> Uh, is a kill this here? Hello. We are back to not getting notifications again. Well, can I say one thing, is a kill? One thing that I did this time was I really didn't have a lot of um, time. I, I kind of uh, I didn't set up the stream um, with a lot of time buffer, and I think that sometimes impacts on the notifications. And so for that, I apologise. That is my fault. Uh, let's snippety snoop these guys off. These are the axial capacitors. Generally, these um, will work fine. Uh, you don't really need to change them if you can't be bothered. But I am going to change them because, because that's just what I do. That's how I roll, man. These are a bit bent. I'm going to have to fix these up. I have to sort of spend a bit of time restoring these tweezers every now and again. Because they just get all bit while I'm using them. Yeah, these ones are stuffed. I'm not going to keep using those. You can go there in the naughty pile. What about these ones? Just going to get some solder on this. Help get it heat transfer, if I can wrap that pin in solder, it'll make it a lot easier to remove. Carting around a little green bit here on my tweezers, don't ask me why. Mm -mm -mm. Wonder if this computer can play Fortnite. Come out, you silly solder. This is another one of these things that I regularly get asked. How do you get the solder out of the holes? Ah, uh, well, you know, you got to just persevere with it. I often fill it up with more solder and then try and suck it out again. You can always use a solder needle if worst comes to the worst. Bit of stainless steel, poke it through there. Done. Just one left. The hardest ones to get out are the ones that are ground. Um, I don't think what this one is, but uh, it's because they often are attached to really large pieces of copper that suck all the heat away. Suck it. There we go. 
all hold out now. I didn't even bother to look at these. What was it? Steve did tell me before. These are 220-16s. Let's get some of axials. Axials. Oh, they're just here. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Ah, 220 16. 220 16. Yeah. Don't tell me you don't have any. No, I do. Two twenty sixteen. Oh, because my shoulder is so sore. I've done myself a mischief. Yeah, there are some pads. So you could actually put a different sort of cap on there if you wanted. There's an opportunity to put in a great big surface mount electrolytic if you wanted. Um, might even have one. Two twenty. Let's have a look. Surface mount electrolytic. Let's see what we have. There. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, so, no, the biggest ones I've got are 100 microfarad 35. I don't have any 22016. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, far out. All right. Let's. Uh. Uh. Okay, I'm going to just use my little thing here. My little thing. This is my thing. You've seen my thing before, haven't you? Uh, it is for bending pins. Now, it doesn't work terribly well on these caps. That's my fault. I blame myself. No one else. I've mentioned this before that when I put uh, these axial caps on, I always try and position them so that you can read the measurement. Makes it easier for the next person if they need to replace the cap. Which hopefully they'll never need to do. I can't imagine people, I could be wrong, but I can't imagine people will be still restoring old 2SIs in another 10 years, maybe, who knows. Where's the plus? There's the plus. Okay. <laughs> now I'm I am actually doing this. This live stream also, not only am I doing it for the purposes of entertainment and whatever else and recapping and all those sorts of things, I'm also doing it as a form of payment for the House of Moth, uh, whom I have asked a favour, and, uh, and this is the payment for the favour. I'm providing a live stream to entertain him. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all sodded on. Jay, if you are in the chat, can you tell us how the kitty is? How is the little kitty? Crooked. There we go. Looks better. Okay, so I've done I've done it um, upside down face. Um, I don't normally do these first, but I did this time. Uh, yeah, where is Jay? Where indeed? Where indeed? Um, how many caps did you say, Steve? Eleven. I think. Did you say eleven? Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes. Eleven is correct, Amundo. In the words of the Fonzarelli. Arthur Fonzarelli. Correct, Amundo. So, we've got a bit of a problem here because I've only got ten fingers and I need to count to eleven. So, I don't know what we're going to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
9, 10, 11. What are you doing in here? You're the whole altogether wrong size caps. What does it say? I can't read that. I can read that. That says 106. And that's 106. So that's, um, what is that, 100? Is it 10? I think it's 10. Yeah, it's 10. Yeah, it's 10 microfarad, 16 volts. So they've, they've m migrated from the, the uh, section next to it. I, I think they sneak under the dividers. Sneaky little things. All right, let's start putting some of these caps into some of the stupid places on this board. Just going to put all the caps on the board so that I don't accidentally push them under the microscope or something like that, which I have been known to do. That is on the occasions when it's not the capacitor fairies that it is actually me. Microscope view. Roger Jones, well caught a live one. Thank you for joining very much. She's from the other side of the world, Venezuela. My good friend Bruce, well, thank you very much for that. Hello to you, L. I'm not quite sure how I should be pronouncing your surname, and for that I apologise. Um, I, um, yes, I'm not sure the sort of sound I should be making with the CH together there, so. Oh man, I, I'm having trouble even seeing the letters. My eyes. But thank you very much for joining, I do appreciate it. Uh, now about a flyback from Mac 5 Talk here. Any good sources? Well, apparently there are somewhere in the UK selling them. And they're not cheap, but they apparently work. So, uh, I was chatting to my good friend Kai Robinson of the Macintosh SE and Macintosh Classic Reloaded fame. Um, and just all-round good guy. And uh, he, I think, sourced a flyback from somewhere in the UK. But it was very expensive, but it was what was promised. Sorry, I started smelling clothes burning. I think it was me. Um, okay, let's uh, let's get some of these caps in the position. We'll try and speed this up a little bit because I feel like this one's going on and on and on. So when I'm putting these caps on, one of the things I'm always looking out for is because these caps have a wider pin than the original electrolytic, I need to make sure it isn't going to hang over onto something that might cause an accidental short. Not an issue here, there's nothing in the proximity, so I can just put this one down with impunity. Whipsy, whipsy, there we go. Soldered on one side. Then we get this other one and we'll solder this one on one side and then we'll flip it over. Let's have a look there. Same here, we don't have anything that we might accidentally overlap, so we can just put this one down. Now when I test this out after recapping, I'm going to be using a special power supply that I have, as part of my testing rig. And it's a power supply that bypasses the startup circuit. So what that essentially means is that the moment I apply power to it, it'll switch on. <coughs> if it's working, that is. And one of the reasons why I really like having this power supply is that oftentimes these computers, particularly things like the 2CI and the 2CX, and 2X and 2, they have, and 2FX, they have issues with um, the startup circuit. And if I am able to make the computer work using my special power supply, but I can't get it to work with a normal power supply, then I know it's either, uh, when I say a normal power supply, one that I know is working, I know that then the problem is related to the startup circuit. And so I can just go straight looking at the startup circuit for where to repair. Simple as that. Be right back. V Vittles time? Say what? Say what? Uh, flyback is common to a lot of TV sets. Well, 
I mean, one of uh, the you can use the same flyback in a 512k as you can from a 128k, 512k, or Mac Plus. So they're all got the same flyback on there. So if you end up getting a one of those computers, you might be able to salvage it from. And then the other thing you got to remember is a lot of those flybacks can be repaired. Um, this one here, just checking, this should still be okay just to go straight down. I know of a few people that have had success repairing um, old flybacks that have got like cracks in it and stuff like that, and they uh, reseal them. And then of course you have that other thing where a lot of the time it's not the flyback transformer anyway. Now yes, I know there are plenty of instances where the flyback transformer is a fault. Yep, I get it. But there are a lot of times when things aren't working and people go, oh, this isn't working, these are the symptoms, and then someone will pipe up and say, oh, that sounds like a flyback. You need to get a new flyback. And so then people will, you know, hunt down and try and find a new flyback, and then only to find out that it's not the flyback. I have had that happen many times. <clears throat> Oh man, had someone contact me today about a board that I have had here for such a long time. Uh, the main reason why I haven't uh, done any more work on it is because I know it's one that is going to take me literally hours and hours to do. And of course, I can get, you know, say three recaps done in that time, or I can sit there and spend hours working on the one computer. It, it's when you're as um, backlogged with work as I am at the moment, you tend to go with the uh, the easy wins, just trying to get as many through as you can. Because it's also really important for me to do these pre-recorded videos. As much as I love doing these live streams, the pre-recorded videos are really, really important for the growth of the channel. They take time, and I don't have time. Okay. Hello, Jeremy's Vintage. Hillbilly Shack? Sorry, it's peering on two lines for me. <laughs> right, okay, so. I was chatting to uh, one of my friends the other day and he was saying that he's got a Macintosh 512K, he's got, it's all working, but he hasn't got a mouse for it too. He's got a keyboard, he's got the computer, but no mouse. And of course, trying to get a mouse for an old 512K, 128K or plus is so expensive nowadays. I don't know if anyone else out there has actually had a look, but people are charging hundreds just for a single mouse. Not like the ADBs where you've got the same keyboard, the same keyboard and mouse working on so many different computers. Um, you know, you've only, essentially you've just got the 128K, 512K, 512K E, and Plus, all using the same mouse. And the Lisa, I think, does the Lisa use the same use of well? Um, uh, a flyback repair video in the future. Well, I haven't done one. So. <laughs> Um, see, didn't Jeremy, didn't it used to just be Vintage Hillbilly Shack? And now you've tacked Jeremy's on the front of it? Is that, or, or did I just imagine that? Ugh. Yes, you can use adapters, but then it, it spoils the look. If you're with an old 512K, I don't blame anyone for wanting it to all look complete and original. I have a 512KE. It was sold to me as a 512. I didn't know until I opened it up. Well, actually, it wasn't even when I opened it up. I didn't know that much about the 512s. I would have known, I should have known this the moment I saw that it had an 800K floppy drive, but... Um, I had never even seen a 400k floppy drive at that time, so I didn't really see anything different. So, anywho, I bought this 512k 
okay. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, 400, 400k floppy drive, so anyhow. I popped in an 800k floppy disk with the system on it, and I was, I was only doing it to see if the drive would spin up, or if the floppy drive was actually going to spin up, and it booted. And I'm like, what, what's going on here? The 512k doesn't boot from an 800k floppy. What's happening here? So I went and looked around, and it's like, ah, oh, it's a 512k E. And so then I contacted some collectors, because uh, again, this is a long time ago. This is back before I was particularly knowledgeable on these subjects. I contacted these guys, some uh, collectors, and I said, so what does this mean? And they said, well, it's still, you, what you've got is still good and collectible, but what you have to remember is that if you are selling it, or if you are describing it, it is a 512K E. Even though it's in a 512K box, and it has been upgraded and all that, it is a 512K E for all intents and purposes. So, um, so you just have to keep that in mind from the collectability standpoint. Um, that if you tell someone it's a 512K, you are actually deceiving them. And it, if I'm to be totally honest, I actually think the 512K E is better to have anyway. It's just me. I mean, I, I like the collectability of them and all that, but, you know, um, for practical use, I feel like the 512K is a far more usable computer. Um, and it still looks beautiful. Well, can I fit in here? Can I? Can I? Can I get in there? Is that melting anything? That's crooked cap. Oh. There we go. That'll do. That'll do. It's good enough for me. It's good enough for you. On the bright side here, um, I'm not seeing anything looking particularly horrendous here. I will give it a little bit of a clean with the toothbrush around where all that really bad capacitor leakage is. Of course, of course, of course, of course, it will get a go in the ultrasonic cleaner because that's just, that's just par for the course. But just for the purpose of testing in this live stream, I'll just give it a little bit of a clean. Uh, just worth noting here, you've got here two rectangular chips. These are the sound chips, the left and right sound chips. Um, these are the same as on the Macintosh Classic. They're the same as in the 2CI, I think. And the, is it the 2CI? Maybe. And the same as the Macintosh Portable. So I've got a few chips that are interchangeable from one to the other. There are actually quite a few parts on the 2SI that are interchangeable with the 2, 2CI. So if you've got a 2CI you're trying to restore and you have a battery bomb 2SI board, and there are a few of them around, you can often raid parts to repair your 2CI. Because let's face it, we would all prefer a 2CI to a 2SI, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we all? Still nice to have a 2SI, but I prefer to have a 2CI. Do do do. In the end, couldn't fix it. Yes, I have had repairs that I could not fix. Uh, now, having said that, some of the early ones, I suspect I could probably fix now with the, with the knowledge that I have, that I continue to pick up. I can repair a lot of things now that I would have perhaps just in the past gone, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this. So, there's that. But... Yeah, I mean, and there are other ones that I, I, I kind of, I won't take on because there's just too much risk involved. If, um, if it's a battery bomb, for example, I could sit there repairing it for six hours and it still doesn't work. Um, you know, I might get it working, but I might not. And then who's going to pay for all that time? You know, I mean, if I said to someone, hey, you know, send me that battery bomb board. If I can't fix it, I'm going to send you a huge bill for the work that I've done. It just doesn't really work like that. You kind of have to take it on 
you take it on with a, a reasonable amount of certainty that you're going to get it working and then say, look, I'm going to, that's, this is how much it's going to cost you, or you just don't take it on. And with a lot of these really, really bad ones, I just say, no, nope, can't do it. Sorry, folks. Um, just too big a risk from a uh, <clears throat> financial perspective. Crooked. Right, so I've, uh, I believe I've got all the caps on this now. So let's, uh, ooh. let's uh, rejoice a little bit about that. There it is, look at that. Ooh, I might even be able to zoom in on that a little bit. Zoom. Oh God, I always go the wrong way. There we go. Zoomy, zoomy. Um, so let's just do a little bit of cleaning with a toothbrush. I'm gonna to get some uh, I'll probably use some flux cleaner because this is in this little squeezy thing. See, squeezy thing. I do actually have another squeezy thing. I should put alcohol in one. I should, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Watch me, just watch me. Just watch me do it. Squeezy bottle. And then we get our labeler. I, S, O, A, U, K, O. Uh, oh. Printing. And then I'll get my bottle of alcohol from over here. That's distilled water. That's alcohol. I've got about probably, I don't know, about nine litres here at the moment. I always keep a lot of ISO alcohol. It's very, very handy stuff to have around. Second Mac, replace my Plus. They're a good computer. I tell you, the first time I saw one, uh, well, actually, I should say the first time I got to use one, I was doing training, computer training. I was teaching someone how to use, I think, Quark Express at the time. So, um, and I, I went to their house to do the training. So it was one-on-one, -on -one. Um, and which is what I used to do, one of my past business businesses is um and uh spilled alcohol on myself thankfully it evaporates quite quickly um and yeah anyhow i was uh i went there to teach this person how to use quark express and they had a 2si and i had two i had never i knew of them but i had never actually used one and uh and i have to say i thought that's an impressive little thing Way outside of my price range, so I wasn't going to buy one. Shush. Shush. I was still using uh, a Mac 2 at the time. Shush. Chicken just went berserkers. Does that every now and again. Okay, now we have ISO alcohol in a little squeeze bottle like this. So this is the area I'm going to concentrate on. Gonna get some alcohol on there, get my toothbrush, and scrub, scrub a dub dub. Will you shut up? Josh! It's just the one chicken, and I think she doesn't like when she lays an egg or something, she just wants to announce to the world she's laid an egg. And then she stops. She does it for a bit, and then she stops. <clears throat> uh, what about a performer for 50? Do you have option to get one worth it? Um, what's what, well, it depends on the price. Okay, so the 550, uh, it's all in one. I think a 13-inch screen from memory. Um, 680-30 processor running at what? 20 megahertz or something like that, I think, off the top of my head. There's nothing wrong with the 550. I mean, they're a nice computer to have in the collection, I guess. Um, very, very, very brittle plastics, so you have to handle them with incredible care. Um,
if you've got the space for one, I, I, I would probably, I would probably not, if someone was offering me one, I probably wouldn't take a 550, only because they do take up a lot of space. I, um, I would prefer a 575, because they have an 040 chip in them. If I'm getting them right, I do tend to sometimes get them all mixed up. But if I am actually thinking of the right ones. I'll get a 2CI over a 550 any day, in my opinion. 2CI is an awesome, awesome Mac. Awesome. With a capital O. Right. All right, let's get the power supply. Where's the magic power supply? Uh, is it this one? Yes, it's this one. I grabbed the, the first one I picked up was the one I wanted. That doesn't happen very often. It is definitely a good day to buy a lottery ticket today. So this is just a standard ATX power supply that I've uh, repurposed. Um, has a power switch on it, which is handy. And um, it's just got, I've just got this connector on it. And I can just go like that, just like that, and then power it up. It's inside there. Oh, something fell out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So I put that there. Let's get some RAM back into it. Uh, I don't think I have a display down here, so that was a little bit a bit silly, wasn't it? I haven't got the speaker connected to it. So how will we know if it's even working? How? I guess if I could connect a SCSI device to it, I'll be able to see the light flickering. <coughs> but I will go and get a screen. I will go and test it properly because, you know, uh, it's just, we, 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 want, we want to do that here. Um, do you reckon I should check them to make sure I put them all around the right way? Yep. Okay. Right, so, what have I got here? Have I got a blue scuzzy floating around here somewhere? Often do. Often do. They might be inside. Actually, I think I know where they are. I think they are inside. I might have to go inside. Shall I switch it on just to see if it blows up? We won't know if it's working or not. But we'll just check and see if it blows up. And... Okay, didn't blow up. So it could be working for all we know at the moment. It could be doing a flashing question mark. But we've got no way of knowing because we're not looking at it. So... Yeah, I can feel things getting warm, so. Okay, all right, so I am gonna pop up to the house very quickly. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'll come down with a screen. I'll come down with a SCSI device. Actually, we had the hard drive. We had the hard drive, don't we? We can check and see if that spins up. And then I'll go and get a screen. Speaker, can I get that out easily? We could put the board in the case and hear it, listen to see if it goes pitching. Let's do that. We'll do that because I just sort of feel like, it, unless we get that, that ching. Yes, it was Schroeder's Mac, Schrodinger's Mac there for, for a minute, wasn't it? It was working and not working at the same time. Okay. Let's pop him in. Just like that. So now these little metal things here are touching those little pads underneath. So when we hit it with some power and go to switch it on, um, we should hear some chime if, uh, if it's working. Okay, three, two, one. Yeah, that was a nice big loud chime, wasn't it? Got a little bit of a crackle and that's almost definitely from all of the gunk. Uh, I think that once this gets good uh, ultrasonic clean, we'll be fine. Okay. Okay. All right, so we are going to get this original hard drive. We're going to connect it up. 
and I will get a screen and we'll plug it in and we'll get a, a muzzy. Muzzy. Actually, there's one just here, isn't there? Muzzy. This is my favorite mouse, this one. This is the trapezoid mouse, they, uh, they generally refer to them as. Uh, really like them, really like using them. So, just, just gonna say it. Uh, some of them have a metal ball, some of them have a plastic ball, like an all plastic ball, lighter. I think I probably prefer the light one to the heavy one. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go get a screen. I'm about to put the back soon music on. It is sometimes a little bit louder than my voice. Well, it is always a little bit louder than my voice. So just be aware, you might wanna get your hands on the volume control. So just give me a second. Oh, Jay came through for me. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm just going to go back soon. Back soon. Okay, right, This people who watch my streams will be familiar with this. This is a little monitor that I use primarily when I'm doing pre-recorded videos. It's designed to actually mount on the top of my video camera so that I can see what I'm filming when I'm filming it. It's a very, very handy thing to have. It's much better than a little teeny weeny little viewfinder. Uh, but it is also an incredibly good VGA monitor. It has a huge range of resolutions that it supports. Um, way more than my other monitor. So, yeah, yeah. It's got a floppy port. Gives an in indication of how old this is. There's actually a floppy port. Right, so let's fire him up. We'll see if we can get this hard drive spinning and see what treasures have been left to us from the previous owners. And No chime, of course, because uh, the, uh... oh, hang on, that's not spinning. Why aren't you spinning? What have I done? What have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? Done something wrong. The, sh the fan should be spinning on this power supply. Like that. Oh, it started and then stopped. Why? Let me just check something here. Hmm. Why are you not? Okay, well, first of all, we'll check and see if it's actually working. So, I'll just leave it on for a bit. Hard drive spins, sort of spins. Disconnect the screen to see if it powers on again. Because I can hear the, the hard drive tried to start up there, but I'll tell you what, look, we need to, you know what we need? At a time like this, we need a Kai Wheats KM601 smart multimeter full of features at a budget price links in the description because what we can do is we can actually test to see if we're getting any power hard drive spun up oh look at that i just needed to be patient 
Oh, it's spinning now. Whatever happened, it happened. Whee! Got ourselves a little cursor that tells us we've uh, gone to the next stage in the uh, in the ROM, and then we'll see whether it will actually boot from the hard drive. I don't know what that, whether that was the power supply causing that problem, whether it was this manky old hard drive causing the problem. If I move my mouse around, will I? Yeah, I mean, I think this hard drive is stuffed. I'm not actually getting any cursor action here. I, I, I actually think the hard drive is the problem. I think the hard drive is stuffed. That doesn't mean I'm not going to keep persevering because I want it to work. I might just clean around here a little bit with the uh, iso alcohol. Still a bit of gunge around here. Um, now, it is my intention to, I mean, we know this logic board works, we've got the cursor, it's looking pretty much like this hard drive is, is a goner, and that's okay, that's to be expected. It's nice when they work, but, you know, it'd be good if I can get it working long enough just to get the data off it. Okay, we'll just do that, got that, switch them on. Got my cursor moving around. Oh, look at that, you've got a smiley face. Welcome to Macintosh. I appreciate your welcome, thank you. That looks a little bit like a 7.5 to me. And I'll be honest, if, it was this, if this was my computer, I don't think I'd be running system 7.5 on it. I reckon I'd... Probably 7.1 would be about the most I'd run on a computer of this speed. I think you'll just have a more enjoyable experience. Unless there's something very specific about 7.5 you want. A lot of the time people go with 7.5 for the networking, but you'll be surprised you can actually get quite good networking running on 7.1 if you install Open Transport 1.3. So just keep that in mind. Elemento is here. Hello there, thank you for joining. This has got a lot of uh, extensions here. I don't even know what that one is. Or that one. Or that one. Let's have a look. This could be a treasure trove. We can only hope. Okay. I didn't connect the keyboard to this, by the way, so I have to hope that I don't have to type anything in. Oh wow, someone has a desktop like mine. I need stacks. There's a little modern Mac joke for you there. So, let's have a few things. First class! <laughs> Does anyone else here remember first class? It was like a kind of a bulletin board type system. So we used to use this um, back in the day. There was first client, class client, first class server. Now this obviously just looks like the client, I suppose. What if I log in? No, the server's not on the network. Cancel. Uh, and first class was an amazing, incredible product. 
Um, I used to work at a, a pre-press bureau, uh, you know, where we used to image stuff for printing. And uh, we had a service set up so that our customers could log into it and upload their files to it. Um, it was good. About first class client. That's cool. First class client is readily available. First class service software, the versions that I used to use, haven't been able to find them anywhere. I'm guessing they're not allowed uh, up on the interwebs. Okay, what have we got? A bit of Clarisworks, Anarchy, which is, oh, that's the old FTP software. That's old, that's version 1.6. Uh, what else have we got here? Sonic Internet Servers. Hmm. Graphic Converter 3.02, Greg's Browser 255. Z Term. Yeah. Internet. So this was even something that was on the internet back in the day with the browser and everything. Let's see if we can get some dates. Find out when this was last used. So the most recent file on here is 19th of Feb 1998. That gives it some age. And let's just have a look at the RAM. Oh, total memory 17. Okay, so time for me to just go in and do a quick little check of how much RAM the 2SI has on board. Because I think that means we might have some 4s. Because that's what, 4, 8, so if we had 16, then one on board, is that, were they that stingy that it was only one on board? Apple's Anonymous, one on board. Wow, that is stingy, isn't it? Oh well. You'd think they'd at least put two on the board. Anyhow. Oh, well, that's good. Oh, that's a very, very good outcome to get four fours. Uh, I'm very, very pleased about that. So, <sighs> you don't know, Jack. Yes, I had a copy of that. Actually, I'll probably still have a copy of it floating around somewhere. So anyhow, I'm going to definitely back this up. I'll get the uh, Blue SCSI or the SCSI 2SD, one of the two. I'll get that down here and pull everything off this. Just make an image of the whole hard drive. Uh, I'll do that fairly quickly too, because you just never know how long these things are going to last for. We've got Netscape Navigator 3 running on this. A graphic converter was a, was a good thing back in the day. You could just convert virtually from one file format to another or just about anything. Very, very handy in the days when we used to use TIFF files. Uh, FileMaker Pro 2.1. Oh, that takes me back. I used to use that. Um, I don't know what Sonic Internet servers are. Intermanage Administrator. No, no idea. I'll have to look that up. Maybe Sonic Mail Server? Well, Sonic DNS Server. So this looks like it's designed for creating an internet server. I mean, I know the name is a bit of a giveaway, but so this looks like you could actually turn your computer into a web server by using this software, which that's kind of cool. I'm going to fiddle with that, and I might set up some websites, and we'll see how we go, and I'll see if I can get this onto the internet, see if you guys can dial into it or something like that. Let's call that a project coming up at some stage. Right, okay, well... All in all, that is a really, really good outcome. We've got this computer working. Um, we have got the hard drive uh, working and accessible. And I'm going to back that up and for the sake of archiving. <laughs> uh, can't stand clutter on my desktop. It's just a fact of life for me. It's not a matter of standing it or not. There's no other option. Um, okay, so let's unplug this just before I'm going to just do one more little thing before I finish up the stream because I do have other things I want to try and get done today. I've got to go out to the post office. I've got to go have some lunch. I've got to do some work under the house. I've got to do work work, you know, like where people actually pay me. Um, okay. Oh, that four fours. I am so happy with that. The fours, incidentally, these are really, really good. Uh, for things like your Classic 2 or your Color Classic because they have a 10 megabyte cap on them so you can put like two fours in them to take you up to the 10 megabyte with those ones so highly recommend you know if you can get hold of these fours they're a really good size to have I was talking to someone about them just the other day and I said sorry I don't have any but now I do but 
they're mine. Can't have them. Uh, right, so last thing I wanted to do before we finish up, I just wanted to have a quick little squiz at the power supply. We're just going to have a quick look and see what it looks like inside. We could test it, couldn't we? We could just try it as it is, just see. That'll be fun. So, so, get that there, point this here. I'll connect the hard drive so I can hear it spin up if it's working. Now this might just blow up. This this might just blow up. Just letting you know. You can buy fours, by the way, from Memory Masters on um, on eBay. So if you go to eBay and you just go search for four megabytes you can buy the sims there um so you know just so you know all right spinning up so the power supply actually works just switch it on switch it off again so we're getting enough power to spin up a hard drive there so that's working so that's good but um knowing these power supplies as i do they need attention because now that i've just put power through this i've charged up the uh the capacitors and so i have to be careful what i touch so that i don't touch why is this sealed up with rivets this isn't meant to be sealed up with rivets who do you think you are look it's rivets Suicide is normally held on with screws. Who is this? This thing, this power supply is trolling me. And I won't stand for it. I'm uh, just heading up to get a drill. Uh, this is an old drill. It's an older model, but it still works. I was about to let it through. Okay, so. This is my Milwaukee. I'll have a much newer, better one, but this one's already got a drill bit in it, so save me from putting a drill bit on. Does anyone think this is a bad idea? This is like a, a later one where they used rivets instead of screws to save a bit of money, possibly. And I'm just, I'm just, you know, putting some theories out there. Okay, will this be enough for me to get this off? I feel like with a bit of determination we will get this off. Like that. I'm going to have to poke out the other side of these uh, rivets. I need a hammer. Uh, using uh, this little tiny thing as a hammer. See, even this is riveted on. The, uh, the earth ground thing is riveted on. Weird. This whole power supply is different. It's different. It's not the same. Magnatech. 
So I've got a recapping guide for a 2SI power supply and I'm going to just grab a piece of paper here and we can have a look and I, I can tell you why it's different. Um, so, let's see, 30. Got a classic two. Two SI power supply. Okay, let's have a look. So, have a look at that there. I know it's not the best view, but you can see it's a very, very different layout. But the really important thing is here, just along there, because that it. I removed it. I removed it. There's a board that just sits there. A little daughter board, and it's this guy here. It has two surface mount electrolytic caps that lick. Now this is a completely different power supply. Uh, not the same at all. And that's probably the reason why it works. So that's really good to know that there is another version out there. And I mean, although these caps here are probably a little bit leaky, um, it doesn't have those little surface mount electrolytics. So, yeah, I kind of just pulled it apart for no reason, because I'm not sure I'm even going to bother to recap this, you know? I probably don't have these caps anyway, because they're so weird. 2200, 25 volts. 25 volts. Can't see it. Can't see it. Hmm. I don't think I have ones that are that tall and thin. So, what was the capacity on that Seagate? Oh, that's a good question, but I can probably tell you it's on here. Shunts. Why don't they say? Why don't they say? It's an ST51080N. So you might be able to look that up. That number again, ST51080N. They're zeros, actually. So ST51080N for Nelly. Factory repaired Seagate. How about that? Hmm. So yeah, not sure what capacity that is. I should have checked, but I didn't. Um, because um, I'm an individual and uh, I will not be told. I will not be oppressed. I'm just, I'm really hesitant about popping these through the other way and then losing them inside. I'd really rather not do that. 80 megabyte? Definitely not 510. Definitely not 510. I don't think so. Oh, man. I'm telling you. I'm going to OJ big time after the favour here is just done for me. Big time. Um, uh, pair of pliers. Pair of pliers. Anyone? 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 Bueller? Bueller? Ah. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to use to pop these things through. Because I will probably, whatever I end up using, I'll probably damage it. Let's use a cheap, cruddy screwdriver. How about that? We're using pliers as a hammer, because that's what you're supposed to do. That doesn't work. Too small. Um, yeah, yeah, they went through. And that. And that, and that. 
One, two, three. I need to make sure I get all of them out. I don't want a little piece of conductive metal floating around inside there. Do I have my blower thingy? Oh no, I took that up inside of the house last night. Egypt. Seems to be a one gigabyte. Could be. Could be. That, that would, uh, you know, that would actually figure because I'm pretty sure the one I have that looks exactly like this, because they're short, they're not as long as a normal hard drive. Normal hard drive is about this big, but they're actually like a little squishy one. And the one I have, I think, is a one terabyte. Okay, that's good. I'm going to put this lid back on. This is Repairs with Bruce, where we open it up, we have a look, and we put it back together again without doing anything. That's uh, what we refer to often as a wizard repair. Okay, let's find some suitable rivets, because I'm going to rivet it again, because uh, it's not really set up to use screws. It's, the holes are the same size, so... Uh, rivets, rivets, rivets. Rivets. But we just love rivets. God, I can't reach that. There we go. Ribbit. Ribbit. Keep saying it. I sound like a frog, don't I? <sighs> Just haven't even been paying any attention to how many people are watching. 33. People are probably starting to head off to sleep now because it's so late in different parts of the US. These, I think, will probably do it. Diameter of 3.2 millimeters. Yep, perfect mundo, as the fawns would say. Always keep rivets around. Incredibly useful things. There's one. Here's two. Yep. Three. Four. All right, so power supply's back together again. Let's put them all back in the case. I don't know why I'm putting it all back in the case. I'm just going to take it out again for uh, ultrasonic cleaning, but I just feel like it's a, get a sense of completion if we do this. And a sense of dropping some flux on the ground. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. So uh, I bought some tickets to this thing. Um, next month, it's a screening of the film The Terminator in the cinema, which of course I've never seen it in the cinema. I've only, I mean, by the time it came out, I mean, the age I was, the original Terminator movie, I think I only ever saw it on video and then on sort of DVD and then on Blu-ray, so, um, but, and then followed by a Q&A session with, don't ask me how to pronounce his surname, Michael Bean, Bain, Bean, the guy who played the part of Kyle Reese. He is actually at the screening of the movie doing a Q&A session. Actually, I think he's doing the Q&A before the screening. But. So yeah, I bought tickets to that and I think they might even have an opportunity to meet him and see. But I'm quite looking forward to that. Because uh, he's, of course, not just from Terminator. People will remember him from such classics as uh, Aliens or The Abyss. He's awesome. He even had a small part in Terminator 2 that I think got cut out in the final version. Uh, it was in the extended uh, 
director's cut thingy. And if you ask me, it probably should have been left out. Okay. People are finding out a lot of information about this hard drive. That's excellent. I expect no less. Uh, let's get the screen. We're just going to plug this in. We're going to use the original power supply. We're going to fire it up. And we're going to hear it chime. And then I am going to then wrap the stream up and call it a day. And I will pop this board into the ultrasonic cleaner for some, some loving, loving cleaning. Some tender cleaning. This is what these, uh, these need. And of course, the other great thing with this one is it has a network card in it. You know, I, I really, I am quite serious about this. I am thinking that I may look into using the software on this to turn this into a web server and set up a little pokey little website on it and maybe make it so that you guys can visit it or something like that just for a bit of fun. Um, we'll see. It may be impossible. I may, I may be wanting to do something that is not possible. But if it is possible, I'm going to give it a try. Okay, so we need some power to go into this power supply. Otherwise it won't work. There we go. And then we are going to switch him on. So I haven't got the power switch in there. I'm gonna to have to do this with it. something long and thin. And don't you love that sound? Isn't it just wonderful having that sound? I feel like Bruce and I are a similar vintage. Yeah, so my vintage is uh, I'm I'm uh, about to hit the big five O, so not too distant future. So that's my vintage. <clears throat> One of the things that I absolutely love about this Seagate hard drive is the fact that it has all of the pin, you know, the little jumpers, the shunts. It has all the directions for positioning them on the drive itself. So you don't need to find a manual to find out which jumper is what. So if you're wanting to set the SCSI ID or you are wanting to change the termination settings or whatever the case may be, all of that information is actually printed on the label and that is really, really useful. So we'll just check the capacity of the hard drive while we're here so that we can settle any disputes that people might have. Say, no, that's not the size it is. Um, and then, uh, yeah, yes, nice little moray pattern. It's that's happening uh, through the cameraing process. I'm not seeing the moray pattern when I look here. I'm only seeing it with what's being broadcasted. So, uh, so if I s turn the yeah, look at that. See, I can change the sh change what the pattern looks like by spinning and spinning the thing around, spinning in infinity. Moray. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's a more. Let's cancel that. Thank you, Angus. I really wish the first class server software was on this. Okay, let's just go up to the Hood, Angus's stuff, map buttons, all right. See, this, this person has done web design on this. Quoting system, Tony's login, global facts for one world. Loving it. I do love it when you get a little bit of history like this. Uh, now, uh, get info, file, get info. Um, that only tells me how much is being used, doesn't it? Be formatted with um, a hard disk toolkit, FWB Hammer. So I need to open it, don't I? And then it shows it down the bottom, I think. And if I go view by icon, so it's at the top here. Uh, 840 available. So 186 in disk, 840 available. So yeah, it is a one um, hundred. Is it one gigabyte? Is that right? One gigabyte? Thousand megabyte? One gigabyte? Uh, and it has 186, so it's, you know, not even like 20% full, so. Yeah. So that's fun. So, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to,
back this up. I'll switch this off. I'm going to go back up and back this up. I'm going to do that now and then I'll ultrasonically clean it. This should switch off by itself now because we're using the right power supply. Fantastic. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's been a lot of fun. So that's another 2SI saved. I'm always happy about that because there are so many of them that didn't make it. And of course, I got those 4 megabyte sims as well. That's another big bonus. Ah. Do, do, do. Do, do. I found the FWB SCSI formatter was better than the Apple SCSI disk setup. Oh yeah, oh way better. Better, better drive performance. Your, your, your drives will actually run quicker with it. Um, I always loved hard disk toolkit. It was always my favorite formatter. There are a lot of people out there that will talk about other ones and they prefer them and that's fine, you know, silver lining, stuff like that. But for me, um, hard disk toolkit was always the most polished and of course with the later versions they don't just do the SCSI bus they can do the SCSI bus as well as, uh, as, well as IDE buses for the computers that had them um, so you purchased the, the 2SI cheap well uh, the, the price for this 2SI is kind of unknown because what happened was it was given to me as a gift because it didn't work uh, by one of my customers who sent me a whole bunch of boards for recapping and I said to him that, look, you know, if I, depending on the state of these, what's salvageable, whatever, I'll give you a break on the uh, cost of the recapping in return for these computers. Well, I got four computers. I got an LC, an LC2, an LC3, and a 2SI. And so far, the LC1 and the LC3 and the 2SI I've um, got working. I haven't done the LC2 yet. And so, so far, it's three out of four. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely going to be giving him a good uh, a good uh, discount on his recapping. That's for sure. He did. I have to admit, send me an awful lot of recapping, uh, just a box full of boards. So that's going to be fun. Um, right. So uh, did you notice the drive is physically smaller than the normal three and a half? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, th this is, I mentioned that before. Is because I have one of these Seagates. I have one of them. Um, uh, it's one of the few SCSI hard drives that I had that still works at the moment. Uh, and yes, it is, it's stumpy. Uh, the normal drive is probably, you know, out to about there. It's maybe, I don't know, a centimetre, two centimetres shorter than a normal hard drive. Um, so yeah, the little Seagate stumpies. So uh, yes, it is noticeably smaller when you hold them in your hand. It does actually feel like they are smaller. I don't know if I have a normal hard drive floating around here to compare with. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, I did do a bit of a tidy up lately, so who knows? Uh, I don't see one. I don't see one. No, no, no. But anyhow, just take my word for it. It's a stumpy. It's a stumpy little hard drive. Um, I have no old Macs now. Used to years ago. Hope I don't get too eager and spend too much. Uh, Breakfast one we have none to start with. Yeah, I, I mean... I kind of got into this. Ah, found my pliers there in my pocket. Um, the I had a few vintage Macs, not many, and uh, and then I actually got rid of some because I was like, you know, oh, I'm never going to use these. They're taking up too much space. And then I kind of got back into it in a big way, and then so I've been sort of trying to get that collection back again. And now I've got huge amounts of them. And I've got almost every computer I want. In terms of what I don't have that I would really like to have, I don't have a working 2FX. I do have a 2FX, but it doesn't work. Um, I might get it working one day, but we'll see. Um, I, uh, Dave is here. Hello, Dave. Um, I, have, I would like to have a Quadra 650. It's not a huge deal with that one, but I would just like to have a Quadra 650, and I don't have one. Um, I would like to have a Macintosh portable with the backlight. I would like one of those, but again, I'm not sure if I'll get one. Um, probably one day I'd like an original 128K, but they're just going for stupid money now. So I've got a 512KE, I've got a Plus, I've got Classic, Classic 2, Color Classic, SE, SE30, I've got a 2, a few 2s, a few Mac 2s. I've got a 2CI, 2CX, 2SI, um, 2VI, 2VX, um, I've got, uh, 
LC, LC2, LC3, LC475. Um, LC580, LC630. Uh, I don't know. I could keep going, but I won't. That's just boring. Listening to me recite the computers I have, that's just a little bit dull. Sorry about that. I digress. Any performers? I think I have one or two performers. I've got uh, the... the What's that one? Was it a performer? I think it was the 5500 or something like that. The director's edition, the black one. I've got one of those. Um, yeah. And I've got stacks of other ones from all different vintages. I've got a whole bunch of laptops as well. Mountains of laptops. Um, I've got a Quadrant 700. I've got a Quadrant 950. Um, love those ones, by the way. I have an Apple IIe, thanks to uh, Rudy from Rudy's Retro Intel. Oh, I must mention, I've got, before I go, I've just got to very quickly say a few things here. So... Just, uh, I want to, I want to say thank you to my Patreons. So I've got my Patreon patrons, patron traditions. Uh, I have a Patreon if anyone wants to sign up and, you know, sort of do the normal Patreon thing. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to, there's no pressure. But if you want to, uh, it's appreciated. It, it helps the money that uh, I get is it goes straight back into the channel. Things for the channel, that sort of stuff. Um, except cookies. So... Uh, we're just going to have a very little quick here, quick look here. Uh, active patrons, view relationship manager. Man. So, uh, we are going to say, I'm just going to do a quick little shout out to, um, uh, first of all, I need to say a big thank you to uh, Burrito, um, uh, who has uh, just uh, pledged the, uh, the top amount you can, so hello to you. But I want to say hello to everyone else as well. So I'm just going to go through the names here. We've got Lucas Elliott. I've got Christian uh, Mala, Malabakin, uh, Group Ride, Garth Beagle, uh, Jason Starbuck, Dab Cat, Antonio um, Rivera Palacio, uh, Jack68K, Proper Speed, Luke Fletcher, Taylor Buchanan, Kai Robinson, Charlie, and Jay. Jay being Jay from the House of Moth. So that is, I believe, the lot. And I just want to say hello to you all. But as I say, special mention, I mean, thank you to all of you, of course, but special mention to Burrito, who just, uh, who just joined up the other day with the uh, top tier. So thank you very much to you. So I hope you've all enjoyed this. Um, it, uh, it, was, uh, it worked out very well. I'm sorry for the clickbaity uh, image on the thumbnail that showed a 2SI that is in far worse shape, which I'm just going to grab now. So you can actually see what this one looks like. Ugh. So this is the one that I did not and will not attempt to repair. I am just going to use this one as a salvage board for getting parts off. Uh, the battery holder lives around here. This is a battery explosion and it's caused rust everywhere. It's caused rust at, um, it's caused rust of all of these oscillators. It's uh, rusted off legs of the CPU and uh, on this chip here as well. A uh, bit of damage around there, so it's in a pretty poor state. And I say this is one that I am basically just going to salvage. I'm just going to take a few parts off, and there's some good parts on here that I can salvage. So this is the one that you saw on the thumbnail. It's not the one that we worked on today, and so I apologise for the deception. Um, okay, so uh, usual thing. Thank you to everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you for keeping me company. I really appreciate it. Sorry if I didn't mention your comment in the chat it goes by fairly quickly and particularly when i'm trying to get this stuff done i often miss them and so my apologies if i missed out on any uh any important messages to me um we got the 2si running that's a, another another one saved that's always a happy moment so that's absolutely fantastic and i hope to see you with the next one next one i hopefully won't be too far away i'll probably do another live stream this coming weekend so thanks again and i will see you all at the next one so bye now